And let's delete that from the agenda. And let's start with the questions and issues. Does anyone have something uh, they want to raise before we move to the open PRs and proposals? Okay, then uh, I listed here a bunch of PRs where I thought we might want to check on. So first one is this on the on the website. And I think I got approvals from Jakub and Standa, but I wanted to make sure that this is something what seems reasonable for everyone. So the change really is that uh, we have now these uh, icons, and when you click on the on the regular link, then you save it in the website. But then you click on the on the icon, it opens a new window and opens this uh, asking the design of the documentation, which uh, yeah maybe is a bit easier to read. And then uh, the same is actually applied in the archives as well. So does this seem reasonable to everyone or? Looks good to me. Yeah, that's yeah, good. Did you have any link text on there if you hover over it? No, I don't think there's anything special. I, I suppose people might uh, think it, it's going to just open in a new window, but. Um... Yeah, I can see if I can with my or HTML skills if I can edit somehow. Okay. Yeah, something like link to full full guide or complete guide or something like that. Okay, then the next one was this thing. So I think with, uh, we discussed this last time and we had some, uh, had some feedback how it can be implemented, but it wasn't really done and the PR author doesn't see the value in that. So, uh, should we just close this? You're asking me, aren't you? And I was momentarily distracted, sorry. Well, sure. I'm not asking specifically you, I'm asking everyone, but. But yeah, I was a reviewer, so I shouldn't have an opinion. Yeah, there's this PR where you suggested to move it into the util class. I guess if we later decide that we want to move it there, we can just uh, do it in another PR. Yeah, I mean, I looked at this fairly closely and I felt that the util thing was the best way of dealing with it. So, I mean, um, if that contributor doesn't really want to, then, you know, that's fine, but we can pick it up and do it. Yeah. So. I say we close the PR and uh, yeah, we can do it on our own if needed. Okay. Does that make sense? Yep, agreed. Okay, and then I actually This one is new and I'm not sure whether someone had the chance to look into it. I'm not sure I necessarily like the pattern which Kate was using here. Which was basically to set some labels which should be ignored and not passed to the resource. 
that you basically use annotation where you specify the some exclusion pattern. And to be honest, I wasn't completely sure if we really need to have it in the annotation. If maybe having some environment variable on the operator or something like that would make more sense. Yeah, I, I was looking at this, uh, reviewing it. Um, and Kate's been sending me some messages offline um, about where to put this. Um, so um, there was a choice between the spec and an environment variable or any annotations. Um, so from what uh, she told me, uh, it was a lot simpler, easier for her to put it into the annotation section, um, kind of cleaner to code. Um, I think the adding it to the spec was a little complicated, but I don't have all the details. Um, but I can leave a note for her on this PR um, suggesting that. I. I don't think, to be honest, I would put it into the spec. I think that would just mess it up. But I don't know, the environment variable would seem to be the best way for me, to be honest. All right, yeah. So I stupidly uh, suggested that she try to put in the spec, um, which she tried. So um, I think if, we suggest trying the environment variable. Uh, that might be a more doable uh, change. I think it's just I think it's just kind of guidance um, that we need to provide um, on the on the issue. Um, Tom Stanislav, what do you think? Yeah, I'm inclined towards the environment variable as well. It's a little bit sort of, um, I mean, obviously we still have to sort of have um, some sort of compatibility story if we change it in the future, but that's um, a little bit easier and more flexible than if it's actually in the CR API. So um, yeah, I think that, that works for me. So someone can leave a, maybe a note on that PR yeah, I okay. will. I will pass it as a comment there. Excellent, thanks. Okay, do we have any other PRs to discuss? Oh, there is there is one that um, Nicholas Pekka was. Oh, exactly. Um, so Nick's been talking to me off offline about this as well. Um, so he's found he's basically made a list of all the configurations um, that can be dynamically updated and that are not forbidden by Strimzy, which I'll ask him to post in this PR. Um, but um, he was having trouble kind of finding a way to take down, uh, basically test test the changes, test if you could take down a broker with a malicious config. It seemed like all the, uh, all the combinations of configs he tried um, were kind of caught by the cluster operator or the field validation in the YAML in the custom resource. So there were kind of all the ones we tested were caught. So um, I think where we left off was, um, I think he's going to provide those configs to on the PR, and then maybe someone can try and, you know, eyeball those configs and see if there's kind of a, a way to mess, a way to test this, a way to kind of um, take down the Kafka broker. We thought Tom Bentley might have, a, have um, an idea of how we might be able to crash it. Um, because if not, if we can't crash it, then uh, I think that this issue can be closed. Sorry, this one's managed to uh, get caught by my filter. So it's the first time I've seen this. Can I just have a read?
Tom, if you want more time, you can just easily leave it for for later or for next time. Yeah, I'll I'll take a look at this after the meeting and leave a comment. Yeah, I mean, I don't really want to push you to now read something in 30 seconds and make some judgments. So. Okay, any other PR someone wants to discuss? Um, okay. Chris, could you uh, explain what the use default values in CRD generation? What? So I think that was that just mean? that was just opened, and I don't think that's completely finished. I think uh, Lime needs to do there something, but in the CRD code in the in the classes, for some fields we have this default value annotation which says what the default value of the field is, and we actually have it used on some places but we never really do anything with it. So there's an issue to see what we can do with it or what we cannot do with it and either delete it from the code and stop using it or start using it. So I right. think, so what Liam is, Liam, I'm not sure what's the right pronunciation actually. It's, it's Liam. Yeah. So he actually adds this to the CRD generator. So that gets into the CRD YAMLs. And to be honest, I asked there my, myself in the review, how is it actually used in the CRDs and what the value is? But I think there would be, for example, a lot of value in uh, printing that into the documentation in the API reference. Yeah, default values. So right now important. kind of, in some of the in some of the descriptions for the fields, we have kind of now at the end of the description test something like the default value for this is blah blah blah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, having this kind of automatically generated through the annotations might make it nicer, and we can then kind of also uh, in the API docs, I don't know, set it apart from the description text uh, and so on. That that would be nice. Yeah. It might, yeah, it might be difficult with the the existing table that we have but uh, yeah it would be good to to have that default value created automatically yeah okay thanks for the explanation Okay, hey, anyone, anything else? Then uh, there are three open proposals. So uh, unless someone has some specific questions, I don't think we necessarily have to go through them here, but uh, yeah, we should get them reviewed and either approved or rejected. So this one is the feature gates one. Uh, Tom, your approval or more comments seem to be missing and Paulo's as well. Then uh, there's another one about moving from CentOS 7 to the Red Hat UBI 8 image as the new base image. And then there's the proposal for adopting the Kafka static uh, quota plugin, which, uh, which Ulf uh, wrote. So the idea is that we basically move it under Strimzy and uh, add it to our images and try to kind of add some of the missing features, which we still, uh, still uh, have there. That's done after discussion with uh, Ulf. So he's fine with this uh, idea. It's not like I'm suggesting to just take it away from him, of course.
So that's the open proposals. Anyone has any questions? To any of them? Why why do you want to why do we want to start using feature gates? Um, I have worked with them in the past, and they they did sometimes so, lead to features being released, you know, as a surprise in, in between release dates. So I'm just wondering what 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 the benefit is. So the way I see the benefit is. Uh, that it should allow us to kind of uh, introduce new features with some kind of, so I described their kind of different use cases where they might be useful. Uh, okay, I, one I'll of have them read. Is, one of them is kind of to gradually introduce the changes like we introduced something was disabled by default, keep it there for several releases, then we uh, as it kind of matures and is more tested, we move it to enabled by default, but you can still disable it. And then kind of, or we can decide that this is not a useful feature and we just remove it. Or basically at the end, it can then either stay there and be kind of in a GA state, or it might just be removed from the feature gates and just be enabled all the time. Right. That, so that's kind of, for example, when, uh, talking about some things, it's quite hard to deal with the upgrades. For example, like last time we discussed this control plane listener. So it's quite hard to have the upgrades, downgrades uh, fully integrated, especially with the, with the downgrades. But at the same time, it's something what you don't want to roll, be rolling out in the next uh, year, uh, because on some environments you need to use it ideally tomorrow, uh, whereas, yeah, you don't really want to force everyone to do some manual steps, for example, to upgrade for it and so on. Then the, the other way might be kind of to really use them to basically control the features which maybe might be experimental or which we think might change in the future uh, and might not be production ready and tested and so on. And uh, yeah, then that's, uh, that, that's the use I'm familiar with for them. Yeah, yeah. And then the first third use case is kind of really just enabling disabling feature. Like right now, today, for example, we by default always create the network policies or uh, the port disruption budgets, but it doesn't every time fit everyone. It sometimes kind of doesn't work for this or that user for some reason. So like the feature gates might be some way how to make it fairly easy to enable or disable them without necessarily adding a bunch of new fields into the API, which are kind of hard to manage and convert and so on. Okay. So feel free to go through the proposal in detail and leave some comments there and so on. It's of course, not just maintainers who can comment on it, but uh, yeah, you can do that as well. Yeah, yeah, I will. We need to consider the impacts on the on the documentation as well. So I'll have, I'll have a read through. We'll be giving the users a lot of power. Giving yeah, them more control. I In a way, yes, but it also depends a bit on how many of them we actually implement or don't implement, right? Like right now, the immediate one where we wanted to use it is the control plane listener. The others are more just right. ideas than necessarily something uh, where we might jump into it uh, right the next day after the feature gates are approved. So yeah, it's, I guess, also up to us to not have 20, 30 different feature gates controlling something. Yeah. Uh, at the end, that would kind of mess up with the, with the code, uh, not just only with the docs. Right, okay. That's good to know. Anyone, anything else about the proposals? Mm. 
then please everyone have a look at them, review them, comment, approve, and so on, so that we can move forward with them. So that brings us to the end of the agenda. So does anyone have anything else they want to discuss? In that case, it looks like uh, we might be done for today.